But uh, she was quite attractive in those days. It really, yes. uh, she was the big woman of the river. And the thing I liked about Georgie, and a lot of people probably don't, was that uh, she always said what she thought and was honest. I know one time she was on TV, and I just held my breath. I thought, if they ask her what what she thinks of their crew or what they look like, she'll tell them, and they look kind of flaky. I always admired her for that, too, because yeah. I so seldom I'm able to speak my mind that I admired somebody that would <laughs> speak their mind out. And she let you know. And she let you know just where you stood. Yeah. But she's done more for advertising the river and helping the river. And she's been a great... Uh, well, wasn't she the first one that ever... Who was the first one that ever put a motor on a, on a pontoon boat? Uh, I thought Ted Hatch. Uh, but then she could give her credit. She's 80 years old. Yeah, we want to take that better. away. But Don't take it. it give her. I think that uh, she was one of the pioneers. In she the was the first one to tie three of them together. Yeah. To and, make the uh, big Georgie barge. That's right. And we've got men today who would refuse that assignment if I said, take three boats, tie them together, and run them down Grand Canyon. Some of the men would say, oh, I don't know. Well, this woman can do it. And she thinks she's equal to men. She and was a maybe pioneer. Maybe she is. She's, She's a pioneer. Been great. No question about that. She was a pioneer. Yeah. I came in to land one time at Marble Canyon, 6 a.m. in the morning. I'd flown in from Vernal because the guys needed some more motors. We and I lined up. Motors. Yeah, we always. <laughs> <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> and boats. And so we came in to land, and there's some guy running up the airstrip. So I buzzed him because I needed to land. I was low on fuel, too. And it's a leopard skin bathing suit. Georgie, and she was doing her exercises. You probably know she's a vegetarian, but she exercises and, and goes strictly vegetarian. And that's probably what attributed to her longevity in the Grand Canyon is 80 years of, of salads. <laughs> <laughs> and she, I took her out to dinner one night, and it was the least expensive date I'd had in years. She had a salad and a glass of blackberry brandy, and that was all. I think she took a little drink once in a while, a little nip. Although nowadays, I guess things have changed. You can't have a little nip on the river anymore. No. It's such a shame to see times change. Yeah. <laughs> we used to have so much fun on the river. Remember when you buzzed us and dropped propellers down? Oh, yeah. In a bag. How about the time I dropped the sleeping bags to you? Yeah. <laughs> Put out the fire. <laughs> I remember one you time. Wait a minute. Now you dropped sleeping bags? In an airplane. Yeah. And put out the fire? Yeah. The bags hit on the edge of the river. The fire was by the edge of the river. Fred was by the fire and it put the fire out. Skipped right in, just skipped in like that, just bounced in those waterproof could have used, bags and just right through the fire. We could have used Georgie for that. Well, how come you were dropping sleeping bags? We forgot them. <laughs> it was a common occurrence in those days. Yes, there was forget. a... Some, one time we started out with 30 people and forgot life jackets and yes. dropped them off the bridge. Yes. Remember how he had so much fun dropping them and they'd, you'd look up and they'd just make a curve. And he was trying to see how close he could come to us. There's enough wind drift from the bridge, uh, the Navajo Bridge, down to the river that you couldn't hit the guy if you dropped him right at him. If you, sometimes you'd drop him and they'd blow over on the ledges and then you couldn't get him. So when we dropped them, I'd say, aim right at the boat. And so this one day, we dropped a big bundle. No wind. And uh, there wasn't any wind. They kept going. <laughs> and Fred's down there, and the echo and the acoustics in the canyon are unbelievably clear. But Fred looks up and he says, do you see that? Yeah, there. we could see it. You know, God damn! <laughs> <laughs> then I heard his motor go, Wah! <laughs> Boom, and it echoes all the way up there. You guys are gonna kill somebody. We're up there laughing, you know. Wow, we thought got old Fred on that shot. <laughs>